Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name's Adam Handler, I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'm joined today by our regular correspondent, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. I nice see you too. Um, and we're going to talk today about um, synchronizing our strobes and our camera shutter speed. Um, and I think, judging by some of the comments and the questions that occur frequently on the WebPixel forum, one of the issues people often experience is that they inadvertently set their shutter speed too high and it results in them not being able to sync. And this normally shows in the form of a black line that appears across the bottom of your images. Um, so in general, if you're um, shooting pictures and you get your black line in the bottom, bottom of your images, please check your shutter speed. However, um, recently, or relatively recently, um, a few of the strobe manufacturers and some of the people creating the boards that control the strobes within housings have started releasing a feature called High Speed Sync, HSS for short. And this is a new creative tool, so we thought it was something that we should really um, talk about a bit on, on this on WebPixel Live. So I think probably the, the best way to do this is to throw you in the, in the deep end, Alex, and ask you to explain to everyone what High Speed Sync is. Oh, thank you, Adam. But, uh, probably, as usual, I'll dodge the question. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think, I think first of all, we have to accept as underwater photography, as underwater photographers, that underwater photography is flash photography. Yeah. We use flashes all the time, and anything that can extend our capabilities in use of flash underwater is something to get excited and interesting uh, about. All, well, all cameras, or well, the majority of cameras, have a flash synchronization speed, which is the fastest shutter speed that the flash will work properly with your exposure. Yep. If you exceed that shutter speed, either the camera will block you from exceeding it, or you'll have that problem of a black line, usually at the bottom of the picture. Now, if you're shooting a balanced light picture, it's not actually a black line, it's an unflashed line, and the picture is still blue. It's but if it's darker, a picture, yeah, yeah. you have a, a, a yeah. black line because there's no light at all going to that part of the picture. Yeah. The reason for that is the way a shutter works, and I'm probably going to have to explain that to understand how, how high-speed flash sync works. But I think just before that, it'd be good to run through some numbers in that different cameras have different flash synchronization speed. The old Nikonos 5 popular underwater camera that had a flash synchronization speed of a 90th of a second. Yeah, it's really slow. M9, they defaulted to that, that, that shutter speed if you didn't have a battery in it um the the nikonos rs i think this is normally always one on my, my shelf behind me there is, that has yeah. a flash synchronization of a one one twenty fifth of a second most modern cameras have flash synchronization speeds faster than that somewhere between one one eightieth most of them are between 200 to 50th mm. one two fiftieth and a few can go up to one three twentieth of a second oh. um, and that's the fastest you can shoot with flash yeah. what high speed sync does and why it's exciting is it allows us to go beyond that limit it does bring some compromises, and we'll get onto those um, later on in this discussion. But as any underwater photographer knows, you know there are times when you want more shutter speed. It might be to help control the sun in a wide-angle picture. Yep. It might be to freeze motion. Yep. It might be to help get a really good black background in a macro shot, particularly when you want to use a more open aperture. In all those situations, you can see why you're going to go faster than that one two fiftieth such or such speed could be really exciting. Hmm. So. That's why we want it, but it's not easy to achieve. Um, so there are two ways that you can achieve um, high-speed sync with uh, in under in, in, in photography. One is sounds the simplest, but it's, it's not available to many people, and that's to not use a mechanical shutter in your camera. A number of compact cameras use a don't have a mechanical shutter in the camera, and they actually control the exposure time just by turning the sensor on, on and off. off. Yeah. And those cameras can sync at any speeds, and that's a big advantage if you're a flash photographer. It gives you that flexibility. To my knowledge, there's only been one SLR or mirrorless camera that's had such a system, and that was the old Nikon D70, which mm -hmm. is a very, it was a D80. Um, 70, D80, yeah. and, um, and it's a, 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 from, from well, nearly 20 years ago now, 18 years ago or something now. And that camera actually allowed you to, to sync with flash at any shutter speed. So that was really quite interesting. But it doesn't all come for free, as we'll come on to. Most cameras, though, they have a shutter. And the reason that, this is the boring part of this discussion, the reason that that limits your flash sync speed is that shutter needs to be completely open for the flash to synchronize with the picture. If the shutter isn't completely open when the flash fires, I can, I can do this with my fingers in front, if the, flash is, if the shutter is only half open like that, you'll get flat when the flash fires. The flash will light the top half of the frame, but not the bottom, but it, not the bottom half, and that's yep. the cause of the black line. Yep. The way camera shutters work is they actually have 
two shutter planes. One is closed when you're about to take the picture, and when you press the shutter, that shutter lifts up. When that shutter is completely open, the first curtain of the shutter, that's typically when we fire the flash gun. Yeah. And at that point, the whole picture is visible and the flash lights the whole frame. Yeah. Then sometime after that, depending on how long the exposure is, the second cutter, curtain begins to rise up from the bottom to finish the exposure, to close the exposure off. Yeah. And although those shutters are very fast, they do take a bit of time. Now, um, this actually explains how first and second curtain flash sync work, is that first curtain or, or front curtain flash sync is the flash fires as that first curtain Lifts. has gone to the top of the frame. That's when the flash gun fires. Yeah. Second curtain flash sync is it fires just before the second curtain begins to close. So yeah. again, both will fire when the camera is open, yeah. the shutter is open, but one fires when the, the first door is, is open and the other one fires just before the second door closes. Yeah. Now, the problem comes is that when the flash synchronization speed of the camera the way a camera achieves those fast shutter speeds is it begins to close the second curtain before the first curtain is completely open. So the first curtain will open at a very high shutter speed. The second curtain actually begins closing before the first one opens. And as a result, there's no point during that exposure that a single fire of flash can light the whole frame. Yeah. And this is where the clever electronics of high speed flash sync come in yeah. because the way that, that the camera manufacturer got over this is they actually strobe the flash during the exposure to light the different um, segments of the picture. So you'd get one flash when, so the first curtain opens, you get a little bit of view through, the first flash goes. Then the two curtains go up, as it gets to the next bit, the next flash fires, and then, and so on. So the cat flash is actually firing maybe twice, three times, four times during the exposure. Yeah. And the reason it's valuable to understand that is that explains why there are limitations on flash power yeah when you go to high, higher shutter speeds because in order to use this protocol you need to fire the flash multiple times during the exposure and therefore you can't do a full dump of flash because it just can't recycle fast enough this is yeah it so down to recycling the, time so yeah. yeah yeah um now there's a few factors that affect this so first of all with the virtual shutter so this is with the electronic um On and sensor, off. the controlling the shutter so no mechanical shutter the compact camera or an old nikon d70 d80 which i think was d80 um, or D7, I don't remember, um, with the old um, shutter, is actually with those ones, although there's no shutter, a lot of flash guns, particularly the bigger powerful ones, they actually, although we think of flash as instantaneous, mm -hmm. there is actually a time of that flash. Yeah. And as you turn the flash up to higher powers, it does basically stay on for slightly longer. Yeah. Now, this is all in terms of milliseconds, but as you're... you're shutter speed starts to get up to a 500th, a thousandth of a second. Yep. So flash duration becomes quite important with virtual shutter. Yep. And this is a, an old flash of mine that I used to use with the, the D80, D70, and I did some test shots with that. And with this old Subtronic flash, it had a, a flash sync, a flash duration. That was probably around about a, a three, four hundredth of a second. Yep. Now, in normal synchronized shooting, that's fine. That's plenty yep. fast enough yep. for the picture. But what I found is when I shot this at a thousandth of a second, where, uh, if I had it on a quarter power, it would work fine. Yeah. If I turned it up to a half power, it would still the flash would still fire a half power's worth of light, but in that a thousandth of a second, I could only get the equivalent of a quarter of the power out of it. Yeah. And if I turned it up to full power, I still wouldn't get any more power. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, as you get, to, so even with a virtual shutter, you don't get all your flash power out. Yeah. Um, and then with with a more with a modern flash working with the protocol to fire the multiple times during the exposure, you have the same problem in that you still can't get all the flash gun out. Yeah. But yeah. the clever manufacturers of the modern flash guns, they've designed their flash guns for this. This is the new Retro Pro flash. Yeah. And this flash gun is, is, is very unusual in that it's it's got a very, very short flash duration. Yeah. And this is designed to, so they kind of thought this might actually also give you this really sharpness of light, um, really short duration to get really sharp images as well but that wasn't the main reason the main reason was to make it high speed sync compatible yeah and it's got a very short flash duration so you can get more of the power out during those very short flashes yeah um, but it's still ultimately limited by how many flashes it's trying to make during exposure yeah so if you're going to a very high shutter speed you will still have to if it's going to flash four times you're not going to shoot it more than a quarter power yeah. um to get all the power out during yeah. the exposure 
and, and I've got the the, the C Cam one hundred and sixty, the new the new C Cam um, Big Stro, um, and it also is high speed sync. It, it, it achieves it in, in exactly the same ways I was described. Um, and it actually, in addition, which is built onto that, it has a stroboscopic function as well. So so you can actually shoot stroboscopic images as normal so which is kind of building on the same idea but obviously mm. just spread, spreading out the the, the the frequency of the flashes a bit more so mm. but yeah same thing um, um mm. and again I and mean, what's what's interesting to note in both cases is they are very powerful strobes um, and i think that's mm. quite an important point as well which i'm sure i will touch on in a minute so yeah yep so the, so the other way um um the other shot with high speed flash sync in the past yeah. is I've taken a Nikon land flash, which also has all these protocols built into it, yeah. put that inside a housing, yeah. and then connected that with all the ca with a ca an electronic cable to the camera. Yeah. And in that mode, I can also shoot high-speed flashing. And this picture here, I'll just pull it up as an example shot. Yeah, this okay. picture here was a picture of an Anthias that I shot. I wanted to shoot this picture with open aperture to make these effects with the sun rays. Yeah. The problem of shooting the sun with an open aperture is the sun's way too bright. Yeah. So I needed to shoot this at a thousandth of a second to, to so the sun wasn't too bright. Yeah. And um, when I had it at a thousandth of a second, I needed high-speed flash sync. Yeah. So I housed the land flash, and that enabled me to take this this shot here. Yeah. Um, so the way, though, that we're, we're tending to solve this problem now is that the, the technology that kind of, I think, is a much neater solution is that the latest generation of, of flash trigger boards, this is the one from my housing, but they, they, they all come this. This is made by, by Pavel. Um, who makes a lot of these boards. What's the name of his company, Adam? Underwater Technics. Underwater Technics. Um, yeah. Probably says on here somewhere. Um, this is the, 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 the high-speed flash trigger board. So it's a normal trigger board that turns the electronic hot shoe from my camera into um, LED lights for the fiber to fire fiber optic cables. Yeah. But this is a HSS compatible one. Yeah. So with a board like this and a new generation of strobe that's capable of high-speed flash sync, I can shoot high-speed flash sync with yeah. this, and I'm able to use my normal strobes, use two strobes or, or yeah. as many as I really want to connect onto here, should I want to. And actually, that, that flipping point at the, at the end is, is quite a good one, is that if you do need lots of light and high-speed flash sync, more strobes, your yeah. best solution is actually to add more strobes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a cheap solution, but it's actually, <laughs> if all your strobes have to fire up quarter power, if you put four on there, you've actually got a hell of a lot of light. Yeah. Um, so, but so, I, yeah, I think it's really exciting that both the strobe manufacturers are working with people like Pavel who make all these boards yeah. to give us this technology because it's a really exciting area. Yeah. I think um, another, I just, there's one I just think popped into my head I really should mention is I think probably the most famous example of using high speed flash sync in an underwater picture is Doug Perrine's picture of the sharks hunting the bait ball that won in the wildlife photographer close to, I think, but about 18 years ago, yeah. and he shot that with housed Canon flash guns on his Canon camera that he was using at the time. And he used that to be able to get high-speed flash sync to freeze the motion of the of, of the sharks racing through the bait ball. And that must be one of the most famous pictures. Maybe we can find it online and put, and put it on, in, in the, in the, on the screen now. But this must be one of the most famous underwater photos ever taken yeah. um, and, and was the overall winner of the, the wildlife photographer of the year as well. And it's it's a picture that you see around again and again. Iconic, this yeah. was shot using high-speed flash sync. And at that time, the only way to do it was by housing a land flash. Yeah. But now we finally got that capability to have in our housing all the time using our normal strobes, either either with a wired system or with a fiber system as, as I've got here. Yeah. So it's, it's really exciting. So Sorry, you, did, Adam, you, did, you did mention that. So, so um, obviously, as is always the case with strobes, we have a number of different ways of triggering them. Um, and the um, underwater techniques powerful circuit board um, works with fiber, um, mm -hmm. so it, it will use the the hot shoe on the camera, which produces a flashes an LED, which then goes down to fiber to trigger the strobes. The C cam approach is different, and it, um, that's because C cam's um, circuitry is actually contained within the strobe rather than within the the housing. Um, so high speed sync with the 160 is available via wired connection only. So so you can't. It does this does trigger with fiber, um, but you can't use high speed sync with fiber because it hasn't got the circuitry in the, in the housing to deal with it. Um, so an important 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 difference there possibly for for users. Um, yeah, but I think this is a really exciting frontier. Yeah. I think, you know I, I've you know I've I've been fairly critical of the fact that these circuit boards and the flat the, the market has been focused on TTL which yeah. none of us really care about yeah. and I'm really excited that 
finally they're actually putting something on that's going to really change the way we can take underwater pictures. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's fascinating. It's really an exciting frontier. And I, I think it's very well timed because it's coming on the back of the proliferation of water contact lenses that we've talked a bit about on, on here before. Yeah. Because one of the things a lens like the Nikonos RS 13 mil or the Nauticam WACP series of lenses do is they allow us flexibility to shoot over a wide range of apertures yeah. and still get really good corner shots. But the problem of opening your aperture up for maybe a creative effect or to help your strobes carry to the subject is then maybe the ambient light becomes overwhelming and yeah. you run out of synchronization speed or flash of shutter speed yeah. um, to be able to quell that down. And one of the great things of combining that with HSS yeah. is you've now got tremendous flexibility on what aperture you choose to shoot at and also what shutter speed you choose to shoot at. Yeah. And I think that is hugely exciting for the way we take underwater pictures. Yeah. And yeah, this is, I have to say, this is, this is, seems incredibly timely and something that I'm really excited about getting in the water and, and using, particularly on, on bright tropical diving. Yeah. But I'd say the main things I would use it for is obviously for standard wide angle when you just need to control that sun a little bit more, being able to go to fast shutter speeds can be very valuable in that situation. Also, when dealing, when wanting to freeze really fast movement, so I think that would be a really nice, nice effect for that. In the same way, Doug Bryan used it yeah. for his famous shot. Yeah. And then um, for the kind of bokeh shots that, that I showed the effect of when shooting into the sun with with what macro lens, that would also be a really nice way of being controlled. That, and then I think shallow depth of field macro. Yeah. A lot of the time these days, when we want to shoot really shallow depth of field macro, yeah. what we find is yeah, we can do that, but the ambient light becomes too strong. Yeah. And um, the only solution to that is to put a neutral density filter on the camera so that the ambient light, so that way you can shoot a shallow depth field macro shot, which is still flash lit. Yeah. So you get all the rich colors of a flash lit shot, but it's shallow depth of field. Yeah. And I think one solution is the neutral density filter. But if you've got a high speed flash sync strobe, you can just go to those shots during the dive yeah. and say, yeah, I want to shoot this, this, you know, do this portrait of this frogfish at, at f2.8. Yeah. And you just dial in f2.8. And you wind your shutter speed up to a thousandth, two thousandth per second, yep. quell the ambient light, and then light the whole scene with flash. Yep. And I think all those things, are, you know, they're just the ones that pop into my head right I now. I mean, that, that's very much like studio flash, isn't it? I mean, we're back to that sort of idea of macro using using macro lighting very much like you would in a studio situation. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah, really, yeah. So yeah, I this is one of the most exciting things I've I've, I've seen for a little while. So I'm, I think it could really transform the way we shoot. Yeah. So yeah. So very much, um, very timely this episode. Um, um, thank you for that, Alex. Um, and um, where can we see? I know you have got some high speed sync stuff. Is that? Can you search for that on your website? I guess you might be able to search on shutter speed, but not not very easily. I'd say I'd, I'd wait for me to post it on 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 Instagram or on Twitter. There you go. Um, if you search for Alex Mustard, I'm sure you'll find me pretty quickly. I think you'll probably find that there's going to be quite a lot of uh, of these types of images out there. So, um, so yeah, mm -hmm. keep your eyes peeled. So, thank you very much, um, Alex, um, and thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to thank our sponsor today, which is Chris at Lembe Resort. Um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, and um, that will give you notification when we release episodes in future. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it and um, please add comments or suggestions for future episodes in the comment section below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you soon.